Powered by Sports Interaction. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Game Over Winnipeg. My name is Liz, and I'm joined by Jackson today. And it looks like I am going to be a little bit glitchy on here, so we're just going to fix some things up on my end. Hopefully, everyone can hear me okay, because I have, you know, much to say about this nothingness of a game. Jackson, how are you doing today? Uh, yeah, no, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, today was definitely one of the games that the Jets have ever played, so... <laughs> That was fun. Definitely, yeah, <laughs> definitely one of the games they've ever played before, yeah. So what is this, 2-1 loss to the Nashville Predators, who I can name nine players on their team, and I can tell you zero <laughs> things that they did tonight. It just felt like a little bit of a nothingness game for a lot of different reasons. Definitely some interesting points that we want to talk about, um, particular to a couple of the players, a couple of the roster decisions, things like that. But before I get into it all, I'm going to roll a clip from our friends at Sports Interaction. Hey, Jets fans. Think you know what way it's gonna go? Make your bet with Sports Interaction. Whether it's hockey, football, or basketball, Sports Interaction has you covered. Bet pregame, live and play, or on one of our many prop bets. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Wanna bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Excellent. Well, thank you, Alyssa, from the past for that. Oh, hold on. I got some other audio going right now. Just give me a second. Jackson, why don't you tell them what you saw tonight? All right. Well, well, this is... Game over! Powered by Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook. All over the place. Um, at the beginning of the game, I thought that the... You know, lines were moving and early on, I mean, less than a minute into the game, Cole Perfetti with a really nice pass over to Dubois uh, to get the lead. And from there, it was just a lot of, I don't know. Uh, the first period was all right. Like Jets played fine in the first period, but then got to the second and they just, again, all over the place. And, uh, you know, they tried to battle back there in the third, but uh, unfortunately weren't able to score despite hitting two or three posts near the end. Those are so frustrating at the end. And that's okay. Actually, you know what? I want to bring it up because I don't want it to take up too much of our time because I get frustrated when other people do it. But did you find that there were like a lot of missed calls tonight? Yeah, there was a lot of missed calls, but I feel like it was like, I don't know. I don't necessarily have too much of an issue because um, the game against Ottawa where the Jets won five to one, there was a there was a penalty, I think, every two minutes in that game and it really slowed the game down so in games like this i don't mind it if it's fair like if both teams are missing calls if they're just not calling it but there was a few that definitely should have been called near the end there the morgan baron high stick and uh, a lot of other things got missed too unfortunately yeah absolutely and it, it kind of it is what it is you know we uh it happens and we we get through it and i i'm kind of the the person who sits there and is like if you are relying on one or two maybe calls from the refs your team doesn't deserve to win anyway and this is definitely not a game that i thought the winnipeg jets deserve to win by any means um let's talk a little bit about before the game started notable return to the lineup tonight logan stanley has been out for i don't know how long a very long time who's uh, he's suffered an injury felt bad for the guy didn't he i want to say he was injured came back and got injured in the same game is that is it starting to be so long ago i don't even remember is that what happened i think he played one game looked decent and then they started on the next game and then it was right at the beginning of the game uh he slid into the board and someone was out again for another long period of time tonight was only his eighth or ninth game i think they said tonight so he's been out like pretty much all year yeah, which is, which is too bad for the guy, like, genuinely. Like, I, as as many people know, like, I have my issues with Logan Stanley and whatnot, but it's the kind of thing where it's like, I feel bad for having issues because I can't even see the real Logan Stanley because we haven't even had a chance to see him yet. He doesn't deserve my criticism yet. So, uh, but uh, I love giving him a hard time. It is what it is. Definitely, you know, our, our, our special giraffe on skates out there. But uh, Logan Stanley comes back to the lineup tonight, which means that Ville Hanela was sent down and Dylan Samberg was a healthy scratch. Now, we knew going into this season that at any given time, it was going to be a rotation of the three of them that was going to kind of... Who knew? Until one of them gets traded, there's going to be a cycle of AHL, NHL, press box between the three of them. And this, to me, is the most 
likely scenario of knowing, you know, the Winnipeg Jets trademark um, is Logan Stanley playing, Dylan Sandberg as a healthy scratch, and Billy Hanel in the AHL. What was your initial reaction to seeing that Winnipeg Jets PR tweet? Like, you know that you know that Simpsons meme where it's like, say it, say the thing. It's like, hashtag <laughs> NHL Jets D, Billy Hanel has been reassigned to the hashtag Manitoba Moose or whatever it's called. You know, we've all seen that tweet a million times of him getting sent back down. What were your first thoughts? Uh, I, I kind of saw it hap- happening. I mean, when, when I saw that he was activated, I knew like, obviously they have to make a roster move. So I figured that it would be him going down. And I, I've been a big Billy advocate for, you know, since he's been drafted and I, obviously you have two more than me. Um, but, um, it, you know, it's, it's just tiring at this point. He, he came up, he got his chance and he, he did well, but you know, he just doesn't look to me as comfortable as a guy like Sandberg did. And he's really stepped up as a late, in my opinion. So when, when I saw it, like I kind of expected it, I kind of saw it coming, uh, but it, it's just too bad in my opinion. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of my, my, my thing with this is that, yeah, it is the move to make it this time. Obviously the kind of the big elephant in the room here is the waivers exemption piece. Like it's so much easier to send one player down over the other. Um, but to me, it's hard because Dylan Semberg has done absolutely nothing to me to make him deserve a scratch. And yet Logan Stanley probably would have had this spot early on in the year and wouldn't like if, if he were healthy and he would have played X number of games, I feel like he probably would have lost the spot eventually. Cause we know that through long stretches of games, we see the real Logan Stanley, which probably is not better than Billy Hanala or Dylan Sandberg, but you also can't fault the player for being injured. So if they were going to give him a chance at the beginning of the season, they kind of have to give it to him now. Right. Because you can't, it's, it's the same thing with Mason Appleton, right? Like when he comes back, it's like, if this player didn't get hurt, he probably would have been, I don't know, maybe devoted to the fourth line eventually after a long stint on the third line. Um, and he's going to have to get that stint on the third line for him to, you know, for us to see what we got with him, right? So Logan Stanley's the same way. However, it's at the expense of someone like Dylan Sandberg. So that's what's frustrating about it to me is that I don't mind Logan Stanley getting a stretch of games after an injury because that's what any player would deserve. It's just, is that the guy you want to be sitting? Yeah, no, no, I totally agree. And when when you've coming off two two games where you played relatively well, uh, aside from you know maybe the back half third period of that Flyers game, um, I thought it was a little surprising. I thought they might give Sandberg one more game, considering it was his birthday. Uh, but he had his birthday party in the press box with Kyle Capobianco tonight. Uh, which was a little sad for the guy, but whatever it is, what it is. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. I there's really nothing for me, like you said, to d- really knock on Sandberg. I think he's kind of you know in the last 10, 15 games, I thought he's looked really good. And uh, you know, obviously, I love Villy, and uh, I have my opinions about Stanley. But really, if if the Jets are rolling and winning, just play the guys that are helping you. So I was a little surprised to see Stanley thrown in there. Uh, but I don't know. It's, I, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I, I'll be like jumping through, like thinking they're playing 8D chess with maybe they just think that Logan Stanley is better than Dylan Sandberg. So they want him to play now that he can. But part of me also is wondering if they just do like, kind of like I was saying, want to see what they got. Cause you know, we're getting close to the trade deadline. Maybe he's a piece, maybe Dylan Sandberg is a piece and they know that they already know what they have with Dylan Sandberg. So they have enough to showcase that. Or maybe they want to see what they have with Logan Stanley to see um, what they can get for him in return kind of thing. Cause I know the Jets are going to make a move at the deadline because we know Chevy prefers to buy. He'll probably buy like a depth defenseman and a depth forward instead of what we actually want, but he will buy, I believe. And part of me, like I'm very convinced, and I I think I probably said this on a couple of streams, that one of those three defensemen is not a Winnipeg Jet come the end of the season. And I think one of them at least will get bundled up in a trade in that capacity just because it's what makes sense and it is what it is. Um, But this was all a train of thought to say, Oh, yes, Logan Stanley. Maybe they just think it's better to test him out now while the stakes are relatively low. They have a decent playoff cushion right now in the Central Division. Um, You know, going into the All-Star break, that's kind of what you want is to be in a comfortable position because lots of teams are going to come out, um, you know, firing on all cylinders after the All-Star break or taking their foot off the gas a little bit if they're going for the tank kind of thing. I feel like that's usually the common ground is that All-Star break is when things kind of seem to people choose to commit to one direction or the other kind of thing. Um... So maybe they're testing it now while the stakes are a little bit lower than they will be in the spring. I don't know, but, or am I overthinking it? 
Uh, no, I totally agree. I was actually going to bring it up. Uh, I just forgot to that. Uh, I, I wonder if they are just trying to see what they have in Stanley, try to get him a few games. And if, uh, you know, maybe some teams call on him a little bit, you know, Rick, Rick Tockett said of one, uh, earlier this season on TNT that he prefers big defensemen because he can't win with small defensemen in the playoffs. That's that was his quote. So excellent. I mean, hey, if, Thank goodness that guy's on TNT and game. not 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 a head coach in the NHL or anything like that. No, 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 no. So, if, hey, I, I mean, if, if the Canucks are looking to trade Bo Horvat uh, in a package for a big defenseman, why not get the biggest defenseman you can get? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, Dave Smith in the chat says here, you can tell Stanley knows slash plays like a guy that knows no matter how bad he plays, he'll keep getting his shot. And that's frustrating <laughs> to me. I don't know. <laughs> Logan Stanley, actually, I should probably pull it up on my phone. I don't know if he played a ton tonight, which is good. I'm a big, firm believer in load management. So, um, first game back from an injury, I don't think a guy should be playing 22 minutes a night. Um, But if I pull it up on my phone super quickly, Logan Stanley only played 12 minutes tonight, which for a defenseman is not a lot. And in exchange, Josh Morrissey played 26 minutes. So, you know, normal stuff out there, I guess. Great, great (laughs) load man. Um, But it is what it is. Um, It'll be interesting to see what um what comes of this sixth defenseman dilemma that's been plaguing this Winnipeg Jets team all year um what do you think um let's just have a fun little game right now the date is what are we January 24th the date is March 24th what can you tell me about what Ville- Hanel is doing right now on March 24th on March 24th uh I who I don't know I think he's probably suiting up for uh uh, hopefully for the San Jose Sharks when we trade for Timu Meyer. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's an interesting one because now, you know, we're so far, we're so far ahead in Villy's progression period as a defenseman. And he's, he's gotten a little bit of runway here in the NHL. I, I don't think enough to really, you know, make a proper, um, you know, painting of what, what he could be in the NHL. I do think totally. that he could be, could be a good player in the NHL but it's it's looking less and less like he's really going to be that all-star player and it, I mean he's still super young could could totally be wrong he might just need you know a new fit but I really I really don't think that he's going to be a jet after March 3rd Interesting oh, okay I um yeah I I, I will decline to comment at this time, <laughs> um, but the, the the PR tweet and like Jackson was saying, like we're big Villa Handle fans, and me of course, I love nothing if not committing to a bit. But it was the play to make, you know. They gotta they gotta give Logan Stanley some time to to get some games. It is what it is, um, you know. In in my perfect world, Logan Stanley wasn't a Winnipeg Jet two years ago when he or a year and a half ago when Seattle picked him up in the expansion draft, but. That's a story for another day. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that we saw in this game in particular. Um, let's talk a little bit about the top six. So we have had the same circulation of top six, um, those lines up there. So the Connor Dubois, Perfetti, Ehlers, Shifley, Wheeler. I believe this is the third game that they've played together. I believe after the losing streak, they flipped it around. And guess what? It worked. Um, obviously, tonight was not a win. What do you think of those two lines? Do you have any particular comments or notes on them tonight? I don't mind them, so to say, but I just, I don't know. You know, I, I really like Shifley and Ehlers together, and I really like Connor and Dubois together. But then with those wingers, you know, Nick Ehlers fits pretty much on any line you put him on. I just don't know, you know, if if he's the best fit. He, he's played fine in the last two games with uh, Shifley and Wheeler, but I don't know, just him and Wheeler don't seem to be meshing. Wheeler doesn't seem to be... I don't know, on the top of his game. I don't know if he's just tired or if he's hurt or what's going on uh, or just age, whatever. Uh, but that third line is, a, or sorry, the second line, wh- whatever you want to call it, the Connor Dubois Perfetti line. I really like that line. But then I just, I feel like there's no perfect combo with these two. It's, I, I don't know how to explain it properly, but I would really like to just try out for a game or two the the Perfetti Shifley Ehlers line. And, you know, but but then, of course, I don't <laughs> you probably don't love Blake Wheeler playing with um, Kyle Connor and Pierre-Luc Dubois. As we saw that didn't really work earlier on in this road trip. So I don't really know what to think about them right now. Maybe try them one more time next game. And if it doesn't work, maybe try something new. 
I'm a huge proponent of the Connor Dupois Perfetti combination. I love it. Um, I literally made a TikTok the other day. I, I made a TikTok like a year ago that was like, guys, like maybe I'm overreacting, but like I saw like it was like a one shift or like a power play or something before Perfetti got his injury. And I was like, I wonder if like Perfetti, Connor Dubois could be a really good line. I was like explaining different aspects of the the, the players and why I think they would mesh really well. And like three days ago i made a video i was like i explained it once but i don't even care i think this could be one of the top 10 lines in the nhl for the next eight years and then everyone in the comments is like except that pierre like dubois is not going to be a winnipeg jet in a year and i was like uh so maybe mind your business like what the heck um but i love that line i i love it and i think it has potential but like you said what does that leave the other line with and i agree that i love the idea of ehlers and shifley and i think it just needs some time to cook before it can really but I don't think Blake Wheeler is their guy. So I think it's the Timo Meyer, it's the Bo Horvat, it's the somebody yes. that you trade for at the deadline that ends up slotting in there. And then you can leave your other line. Depending on how good the other guy you get there is, that can become your first line. To me, it's likely the second line. But to me, you run a bit of a 1A, 1B, and Bob's your uncle. Who cares which one's your top line? It doesn't really matter. But I don't really know right now. And I thought that tonight, they both... After, you know, that initial goal was gorgeous. We need to talk about the Perfetti feed. It was so fantastic, and I can't wait to see that vision for years to come. But after that, I thought that they kind of just fell off a little bit. Yeah, no, they... I don't know. But it, I said earlier off on the top of uh, the show here, just they, they played really good for the first, you know, five minutes, I'd say. They were, you know, push and play. They score early here. But... It, it just seemed like Nashville made adjustments and the Jets couldn't figure it out. And like we were talking a little bit before we started here, how the Jets just can't figure out how to get around the trap. They just can't do it. I don't know why. Like it's been a common theme for years now, going back to early Paul Maurice days, just when teams go into the trap, the Jets do not adapt. They have no clue what to do. And uh, that is a little worrying to me. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree because it's the kind of thing where it's like trap defense is generally done by teams that are a little bit more reserved. They're playing a little bit more of a conservative game. I understand that. Um, so you might not see it with some of the stronger teams like this, that, whatever. Maybe they play it occasionally. Maybe they play a little bit more of a hybrid type of style. Whatever. If there is a common, like we talk about systems all the time and it's my favorite thing. There was, there was an episode of the Jet Center podcast that um, Jax and I were a part of back in the day, way, way back when. Um, it was so funny. I remember Kishore, um, you know, at Science Keish on Twitter. He did a show with Brady the other day. We love Kishore. Um, he was venting on the show and he's like, people talk about systems, systems, systems. There are four systems in the NHL. And he's right. The systems aren't that complicated. So all that's to say. If you're a professional hockey team and there is one single system that doesn't change from team to team that plays a trap defense and you can't figure out a way to manage it, you can't figure out a way to generate anything when playing against it, that's not good. <laughs> like, no, exactly. Like, it's it, it's not like the traps is new, brand new thing that teams oh. are, you know, rolling out and the teams just have to, you know, you're scrambling to try to figure this out. But uh, the Jets really are that team and it's... I don't know. You don't have to reinvent the wheel or anything, guys. Just make just game plan around it. I don't know. Do have a practice. Just <laughs> only trap and just figure it out. I don't know, but yeah, Here's just we, we've seen this a few times this year. But uh, it's just a little frustrating when this keeps happening. And the thing that's frustrating to me too is last game, like the Washington game from earlier in the year. I remember really in particular was when it was on full display that was also when Nikolai Ehlers was still injured so I was like they don't have their guy who knows how to get in the zone at any occasion I thought that Nikolai Ehlers our zone entry king was just a guy tonight in that capacity so it's like maybe it is a team thing like it's if you're one guy who you can always count on to get into any zone in any capacity can't do it either like obviously he was fine and he was better than most but it wasn't it wasn't great. So that was definitely frustrating. And all that leads to the Jets not being able to create a ton of the chances they need to create to get past a goalie like UC Soros. Yeah, I I don't know. It's it's definitely something they're going to have to work on. And, and it, like moving into the playoffs, too, when teams are going to, you know, get the lead. Like if the Jets do somehow play, play Nashville in the first round, let's say the Jets win the Central and the Nashville's the eighth seed in the wild card. That's what Nashville's gonna do. And if the Jet if the Jets go down, you know, one nothing early on in the game, I promise you the Predators are just gonna sit back, sit in that trap because they know the Jets aren't gonna be able to defend it, right? And I don't think Nashville's gonna make the playoffs. I don't think there's a chance in hell that that happens, but uh 
that's it's just something to think about for sure yeah absolutely i think that uh if, if there's any yeah one thing about a team that is almost like a guaranteed oh they won't be able to do this like that's not what you want from the team that's considered to be the best in the west and as at modern history says in the chat here it's not a good road trip for one of the best teams in the western conference to go two and three and i agree considering that uh one of the teams they lost who was the montreal canadians so i uh I, I didn't get a chance to look at it today, but I know Murat Atesh from The Athletic, as everyone who's listening, I'm sure knows we love Murat here. Um, he put out two articles. I didn't get a chance to read them yet. It's been a been a busy stretch here. Um, but he put out one article talking about, you know, how the Jets are fantastic and a lot of the things that we've seen from them this year being really good, really promising. And then he put out another one that's kind of like an almost are they frauds type of article, which I think is really good to look at kind of the both both aspects of it. So I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I like the concept of it, right? Because there's so much good that we've seen from this team this year. But like you said, going two and three when you're the best team in the West or whatever on a road trip is not great. And there are a lot of things about the Winnipeg Jets play in this new year that to me have been not great. So um, one thing I want to talk a little bit about um that I think has been a little bit not great is the Winnipeg Jets power play. Um, They need to score more power play goals when they have five guys who can score almost at will on their power play and they simply aren't. Uh, Do you have any thoughts on the Winnipeg Jets power play as of late, particularly the first unit because they seem to be using those guys a lot more? Um, Any thoughts on anything you liked, you haven't liked from them? I I haven't hated the power play, you know, going back to about a week ago, but definitely the last couple games at least it's been a you know and even in toronto too i guess uh it just has not been that as effective as you'd like when you have pierre luc dubois mark shifley uh josh morrissey nick ehlers and blake wheeler all on the same unit like that is an elite unit in the nhl and uh, you know i i know power plays go through slumps no matter who's on your power play uh at times of the year but it is a little worrying, you know, in Philadelphia, I think the Jets had four or five power plays and they didn't score once. And I, I know Philly is a team similar to Nashville where they're all, you know, more system oriented than talent oriented, I'll say. Um, but it, it is a little concerning. I I don't and, you know, I, I don't mean to bag on Blake Wheeler because I did that enough this off season. But he he's just not the guy that he used to be. And that, you know, it's expected. He's he's older and he does have flashes where he does play really good. He does string together really good games. But he's just I noticed lately he can't settle down a puck and he can't he, he he's not making that pass anymore. Those long, you know, side east west passes that he's been making throughout his whole career. And I wonder if that has a bit to do with it. But uh, I don't know. Just my thoughts there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the kind of thing where I I don't think like Blake Wheeler, I don't know. It's so interesting because you think back to like four or five years ago, like a bit longer than I could go, I guess. I don't know. Blake Wheeler was literally like a top 10 winger in the NHL. Like we rag on him. Like I do too. Like, and so do you, (laughs) we, we, we rag on the guy, but like, we're not dumb. Like we know the kind of player that he used to be, but his game was also quite reliant on how heavy and fast of a skater he was so when you lose that step and a lot of your game is built around that like it just makes you a less effective player it just does so someone like Cole Perfetti who's like notably not that fast like I have a feeling his type of game might age a little bit better I'm also thinking like 15 years into the future I'm not worried about Cole Perfetti Mm -hmm. this is all to say when you're a fast player and you get old, you're less fast, and it makes it harder for you to play the same type of game that you used to so it'll be interesting to see how Blake Wheeler um, you know, fits into this team considering they're probably going to look to make a playoff push, stuff like that. Are they committed to this guy being in their top six or are they going to look to kind of repurpose him and see if maybe, you know, oh, those east to west passes that you used to make, maybe you can make him now to spring Morgan Barron on the third line when you guys are hemmed into your zone a little bit when you're matched up against the great powers of the West in the first round of the playoffs. Who knows what that looks like? I think it's also quite trade dependent and it'll be interesting to see what kind of personnel they have come playoff time if we make it there. So hopefully the next couple months go according to plan. Um, But Jackson and I were kind of talking about how this game, there are some, like, obviously the trap storyline, talk a little bit about this, that, whatever. It was a game of the goalies, for sure. That's when, when you have very little to talk about as far as, you know, cool goals and, like, a, a lot of stuff. Oftentimes, it's because the goalies on both sides of both nets, both sides of the ice, were strong. And you have two goalies who have won the Vezina. Did Saros ever win the I don't, I'm in the last couple of years. I think he was runner up. Yeah. Definitely a finalist in 
several or one, two, should have been more um, Vezinus in the last little bit. Yuzi Saros is a fantastic goaltender. Had a slower start to the year. Um, he's in full form. After that, what is it, like a 65 save game he had a couple weeks ago? He's just been fantastic. Yep. And Connor Hellbuck, <laughs> we know our guy. Um, they were both really good tonight. Any thoughts on the goaltending in this one? Yeah, well, you know, Kevin Sawyer talked about it for about half the game because there was about nothing else to talk about, really. But, uh, you know, Soros is a, obviously a smaller guy, but, man, he's quick. Like, he's he's so good at just knowing where the pass is going to be. And that also, um, I'm not sure if it's predictability on the power play or what, whatever you want to call it, but he, he's just really smart. You know, when, when the pass is going over to Connor, he's already there before the shot comes off the stick. Like, he's just east-west, super just great instincts for a goaltender. Uh, and I think, I mean, you have to be when you're a little bit smaller in the net there. And then hello book. I don't know. He's just super confident that that one safe he made, I was dying laughing. I think there was about five minutes left in the third and I can't remember who was coming down the wing, but it was, um, it was a two on one, I think. And Morrissey kind of cut off the other lane. So the guy just shot the puck and hello book just stood up. He didn't even move. He just stuck out the blocker and it went into the corner. I thought that was kind of funny, but, uh, No, Hellebuck's definitely playing some of the best hockey for a goaltender that I've seen in a long time. And uh, it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. And I'm happy that he's on my team. Very, very true. And it was so funny. I was watching the game. I had there are a couple people in my house and uh, for the first goal gets let in um, as a, whatever of a goal a nice goal I was like that is the only Nashville Predator who's allowed to score Cody Glass noted Winnipeg boy I was like you know what you you are allowed to score in this game um, Brady um, our other co-host shout out to Brady sent me um, we love natural strat, stat tricks uh, the hockey stat cards that they pull up after every game um, they use um, like Dom's game scores and they show it on like a standard deviation thing Neil Pionk's defense Defensive impact on the game, um, very, 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 very poor, like going down into like the minus two game score. So I have been so mean to Neil Pionk on the show that I don't think I even want to talk about him tonight because tonight was just another game to me. It's not bad enough that it needs a whole 15 minute screaming segment like they sometimes, like he sometimes gets. Um, but uh, I just needed to give that shout out uh, to Brady to that stat card. You know, when you look at it, for those of you who are watching on the stream, you can sort of see um, they go up and then they go down. And the ones that are way down, there is that, that that's the Neil Pionk for you. There you go at the, at the bottom of the list there. But um, I just wanted to give a quick if we're talking about defense, the shout out to Logan Stanley's first shift back, um, defensive zone turnover, <laughs> weird pinch, massive hit, fight off for five minutes. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I mean, hey, if you're gonna come back into the lineup and uh, try to make a name for yourself, try to you know take that spot from Dylan Sandberg, I think, I mean, no better way to do it than Big Stan coming coming up, making a big hit, making a big fight, uh, or having a <sighs> big fight i guess uh good, he beat the shit Stanley. out of him though he beat the he, shit he, out he of did. him he did um uh, you know all things considered you know we're sitting here talking and saying like oh i can't believe he got scratched but all things considered i don't think stanley played all that bad and like given it was in sheltered admittance i didn't really notice him do anything weird or you know yeah. less than i expected anyway um but yeah no good good for stan i think that was a good first game back for him and hopefully if we are looking to move him at the deadline or if that's something that we're considering hopefully teams also realized that uh he's better than he was last year yeah absolutely um i think that pretty much sums up most of what we wanted to talk about tonight just lastly um our top pairing boys dylan Demello to cole perfetti to pierre luc dubois is the sequence for a goal from my dreams so shout out dylan DeMello, um our point scoring king our secondary assist king and josh morrissey um had you know josh morrissey is josh morrissey but at the end there it took a little bit of a tumble and neil pionk had to come out for him and i'm gonna pretend that he's why we didn't score at the end there because it was neil pionk and not josh um any speculations on if we think josh might be hurt or like i optimistic that he's not he stayed on the bench so i'm not sure any thoughts on that situation uh, he better not be hurt or else we are in big trouble and the trade deadline, if if it is a long-term thing, the trade deadline gets a lot more interesting uh, because I am kind of worried about the defense as it is with Neil Pionk in the top four. I can't even imagine this Jets team if Josh Morrissey's not there. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I don't know if uh, Dom Lucician put out these new um, maps today, and oh man, they were sick. They're so cool. They look like spider webs a little bit, and basically he ranks the game score of um, the top utilized players on each team, top 12 forwards, top six defensemen relative to one another. So like, for example, Mark Shifley is our most used forward or no I think it's Cal Connor something like that and it's like how does he stack up against the most used forwards compared to other team whatever in the league Josh Morrissey obviously the most used Winnipeg Jets defender is in like top percentile of other teams best defenseman in the NHL which is freaking huge I know that we've been loving Josh all year and also I gotta say the Ottawa game when Jackson was on game over Ottawa I was on game over Winnipeg um hearing Josh Norris as like a real person on the Ottawa Senators was so funny I was like Josh Norrissey wait what and then I I (laughs) thought it was like I, I every time I would hear it I thought it was Dan Robertson being like Josh Morrissey, but then saying Josh Norrissey by accident and then correcting himself, he'd be like, Josh Norris, and I was like, oh, yeah, no, it's Josh Morrissey, you're good, but no, it's a real person, um, (laughs) so, anyways, just thought I'd bring that, uh, that was funny, and I forgot that Josh Norris existed, but Josh Morrissey, freaking goat out there, so, um, fingers crossed that everything is okay on his end, shout out to Dom for those awesome maps, I love when those things come out, because it shows me that I'm right, Neil Pionk is bad, Pierre-Luc Dubois is good, all is well in the world. (laughs) um that is it for game over winnipeg today um it has been a pleasure jackson before we jump off jackson has a fantastic youtube channel he posts super frequently um insanely quick turnaround time uh for videos after games super often if there's something big to talk about jackson plug away anything that you want uh winnipeg game over winnipeg listeners to know about you your channel and anything else you got uh, yeah, so, you know, as, as Liz said, uh, I do the YouTube channel, so game recaps, any Jets news, any 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 fun things, uh, you know, that I can think of, uh, videos go up there, Jets Hub, J-E-T-S-H-U-B, and then, yeah, just follow, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, Jets Hub Y-T. Excellent. Well, Jackson, it has been a pleasure. Jackson was one of the first ever ho- or guest pardon me on game over winnipeg earlier in the winter he was on game over ottawa with mod last week uh we love jackson over here thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening to come and chat with me winnipeg jets play again uh, a couple more down the stretch before the all-star break when obviously connor hellebuck is going to florida which we are very excited about for him uh you guys can catch everything game over winnipeg related at sdpn sports on youtube on twitter and everywhere you can find myself at Liz hood on twitter my co-host Brady at NHL Chunky. We're always around chatting all things Winnipeg Jets. So thank you everyone for tuning in. For those of you who are active in the chat tonight, listening, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you go check out Kenny and Rennie as well. Their stream will be starting up in a few minutes and they're 